Hello, everyone. Welcome. We're so pleased to see you. Um, webinar days are, and there's Jamie, uh, and she'll be joining us really soon after we just do a, a couple little housekeeping things. I uh, just wanted to let you know that uh, at Becker's, our webinar days are some of our happier days. Um, we just love the opportunity to, to have this time with all of you. And um, we've been having just great success with seeing folks really enjoy the webinars that we've been able to offer. I couldn't help but do a little copy paste of this long list of people that are joining us today and all the different roles they have in our field. It's like a who's who in early childhood. So um, this was li literally just a small sampling, but I just think it's, it's really exciting that these topics can touch so many different people. We have, I'm Leslie Esslinger and I'm the Director of Education at Becker's and I'm here along with our webinar team to make sure that things will go smoothly. They'll, they'll answer any questions you have in the chat box. And if you have questions for Jamie, it's easier for us if you can throw them into the question and answer box and then we'll try to, um, Put them together and ask Jamie at the end when we if we have time, which um, I'm sure we'll try to save time for that. And um, 26 countries uh, signed up for this, so this clearly is a topic that means a lot to a lot of different people. We also are so excited that um, I think just about all of the sales account managers at Becker's decided to be on this uh, webinar as well. Uh, they think the topic is important, exciting, and they want to share it with all of us. So. Let's just kind of do our little housekeeping. We do this every time quickly. You will receive a certificate of attendance and that comes by email. There will be a recording, not to worry. So you can watch it again. You can share it with colleagues. We have many additional resources. Jamie was so generous with her resources to share with you. And uh, Marilyn, Kathy will be able to put those links in the chat box. So you'll be able to get to those later on today. And one thing we've added new is for every webinar we do, there will be an evaluation poll at the end. It's all of three questions. It's really important to us that we get that feedback. So we hope you can hang in there till we, um, till we get to the end. With Before I turn it over to Jamie, I just want to let you know, I'm not going to do a full formal introduction because it will become very evident to you how um, how much she has available to share with you. Her expertise in this area is really impressive. And most importantly, we've built this wonderful partnership with Jamie to be able to bring her concept of Tinker Tubs, which she came up with um, quite a while ago, and uh, work with her, create something new out of it, and bring it to our customers at Becker. So we're just thrilled to have this wonderful relationship with Jamie, and you're going to love everything you see. So Jamie, I'm going to turn it over to you. Let you bring your slides up. Thank you, Leslie, for those kind words as I bring up uh, my slides. Okay, can you guys see my screen? All right, so I'm going to move my chat box because it was right in the center. All right, thank you, everyone. You are here to create, make, and steam ahead with Tinker Tubs. So I am super excited that you have made the time out of your busy schedule. I know um, in the chat box, people were saying that it's nap time or you're on your lunch break. So I just first want to start by saying I am truly grateful that you have made the time for this training. Now, because you have registered, I'm going to go ahead and assume that you have some interest in introducing tinkering to your young learners. But maybe you have a fear that your classroom may end up looking like this if you do introduce tinkering. Or maybe you have experimented a little bit with tinkering, maybe you use loose parts inside your classroom, but you're really still not sure what the educational value is, or you aren't really sure what your learners are supposed to learn, or how is tinkering different than loose parts or engineering, and how do you add steam to all of this? Well, don't worry, we are going to cover all of this in today's training. Now, brief introduction. My name is Jamie. I'm a STEAM consultant, 
owner of Preschool Steam. I'm a former art teacher, co-author of the book Steam Kids, and I'm mom to three kids of my own. And actually, I'm going to share a story with you about my youngest because she is the one that helped me create uh, this concept of Tinker Tubs. Now, I want to make sure you're in the right place because if you are a early childhood educator, no matter what your learning environment looks like, or no matter what type of setting you're in, if you are inspired by your young learners, you want to spark curiosity, spark wonder, then you are in the right place. You are in the right place if you want to bring more hands-on play into your learning environment. Now, I will say, with that being said, if you're looking for worksheets, more printables, or set and forget centers, then this is maybe not the training for you. So I want to value your time. And so if you're looking for just kind of more worksheets, then this probably isn't the best training for you. Because in today's training, I'm not going to give you the latest educational buzzwords. I'm not going to fill it with high level theory that you will never actually have time to implement into your classroom. I'm going to give you actionable steps that you could get started with the Tinker Tub today. So, all right. I am seeing, oh, and hello to everyone that is still saying hello into the chat box. Thank you so much for sharing. And I want to say before we dive into what the training today, and the training works best if we give our undivided attention. Now, I know some of you are at nap time and lunch break and do it in multitasking as you're watching this. Just know then I do suggest going back and watching the replay so that you can get the most out of this training. So go ahead if you can. Turn off your phone, turn off social media, grab your bottle of water or coffee or tea or whatever <laughs> your beverage of choice and give your attention to this training. Because I'm gonna share with you the three secrets to success with Tinker Tubs. And I'm gonna go ahead and share them right now and I will point them out during our training, but you will learn why Tinker Tubs are more than just materials in a tub. Secret number two, how to use Tinker Tubs without being a tinkering expert. And secret number three, the three mistakes to avoid when getting started with Tinker Tubs. And of course, I'll share what to do instead. So as I mentioned, Tinker Tubs originally started with my youngest. And this was back in 2017. She was three years old at the time. And I had just started the Preschool STEAM website. However, I had already been working with educators and already doing STEAM trainings online. And I needed a few extra minutes to put together my slides for a presentation I was going to give. So I needed something to keep her busy just for a few minutes. And I'm sure you can relate if you're in early childhood, you may have random things on your desk or on your counter. So I took what was literally on my desk, which were these mini plastic cups and craft sticks and put them in a pink bucket, which she loved. And to my amazement, it kept her busy way longer than I just need a few minutes, but it kept her engaged for much longer. And I was able to completely finish my slides for the training I had. So then I began to experiment with different types of materials, different types of trays and tubs. And it was so amazing to watch her interact and manipulate the different materials. So then I tried it with my other two children. So at the time they were um, seven, five and three, and we even set up a little tinkering cart in the kitchen so that when I was cooking dinner that they could then tinker and create. And it was amazing to me, just the mindset that this got them thinking about how they can manipulate and put different materials together in new ways. So, then I started to think, okay, can this work in the classroom setting? So then I set out to test it with um, different classroom environments. 
So I packed up my minivan. This is a real picture of my minivan getting ready for a workshop here. And I did work with local preschools. I also have um, hosted my own workshops. I've hosted my own camps. And I really got to test out the idea of Tinker Tubs in different types of settings using different types of materials. And through that, in working with different educators like yourself, I have developed the Tinker Tub Magic Method. And that is what I want to share with you today is that this is how you take a Tinker Tub and bring in the magic sauce of learning. It's how you can take simple building materials and really um, turn it into an enriched learning environment or experience. And so I'm going to talk much more about this, but I want to make sure we're all on the same page. So what is tinkering? Because if you're like me, you may picture a messy garage, lots of tools, kind of random miscellaneous parts all over. I know, I always think of my grandfather because he worked at a hardware store and his own garage became like a hardware store. He had every tool, every miscellaneous part that you would ever need. And he was always out there putzing around, tinkering, figuring out how things work. And if we look at the definition of tinker, to repair, to adjust or experiment with, that is exactly what we're doing with tinkering. You may not have a plan, but you're curious how something works. And this is what is beneficial to our young learners, that tinkering teaches learners to think with their hands. Now we know our young learners are very sensory oriented. They learn through the different senses. And so giving them additional opportunities to actually touch and play with different materials, they are learning how to think with their hands. So in our example of the plastic cups and craft sticks, the children are learning, okay, how can I stack this, these cups? What can I do with the sticks? And they actually are figuring it out on their own without us as the educators having to say, well, turn the cup upside down and then put the cup on top. Because what happens is this type of tinkering helps our young learners make new connections. Let me share an example with you. So here's our mini cups and the student has figured out that if you turn one upside down and then stack the other one on top, you're going to get a much taller structure. Well, then that could be applied to when they're using larger cups and now we can build bigger structures. So the student was able to take what they learned from the Tinker Tub and apply it in a new way. Now compare that to this learner who, if you look closely, you can see in the building that um, was using wooden planks and the child was able to build this really cool um, tall tower. But when it came to the cups, you can see he didn't have quite the same experience. He didn't really know how to stack or how to build with the cups. Now I'm gonna come back to this story um, a little bit later in the training and show you how this ended up. But tinkering helps develop fine motor skills. It helps problem solving skills and can even help in developing collaboration and sharing skills. So tinkering incorporates all these things that we want our young learners to have the opportunity to practice and play with. So tinker tubs are more than just materials in the tub, but you as the educator, you know you are building up those foundational skills that they will need to be the next generation of innovative thinkers and creative problem solvers. So, there, so there's much more magic than just the materials in the tub. Now, one question I get a lot is, what is the difference between tinkering, making, and engineering? Because there is a slight difference between all three. And really, it comes down to your intent or your purpose behind it. So with tinkering, we are trying to figure out how it works. So you're just 
figuring out, moving the materials, manipulating them. How do these work? When you're making, you're actually, your intent is what can I create? What can I make? And then in engineering, you are solving a problem. So a lot of times if you go over to Google and you're looking for STEM challenges or STEM activities, most of those, I'd say like 99% of them are simply engineering challenges because they're solving a specific problem. But there's much more that goes into it. And I want to share the example of my daughter again. Here is a behind the scenes peek of her. This is her literally tinkering next to me as I'm working. And she's using the cups again. That was one of her favorites and pattern blocks. And she is just figuring out how they work, how she can stack them, how she can make them stand up tall. Now, fast forward to today, she's seven years old, uh, soon to be eight. Her birthday's in a couple of weeks. So very exciting news around here. But I no longer have to make her tinker tubs. She goes and finds her own loose parts. And now she has reached the making level where she's like, what can I create with this? So tinkering allows our younger lear learners that chance to just discover and see how it works. So they can then go on to be that maker and actually start making and creating. Then the next level in engineering, we are solving problems. So it kind of, it, like I said, it's little nuances, but it really, when you start to put it all together, is really amazing to watch. So what exactly are tinker tubs? Well, it is a tub that is um, that you put provided materials in that encourage children to build, create, and design. And tinker tubs can look many different ways. And I'm going to share lots of examples. I am going to share how you can make one. So just hold your horses. I will get there, I promise. But tinker tubs can look many different ways. And I'm very excited to share that Beckers, in working with them, we've created also a fast and easy way to get started. So stay tuned for that. But a tinker tub, if you don't know the magic behind it, to any parent or administrator that just sees this bucket of materials, they may not really get it. So that's where you as the educator, you really have to be the expert for your students and understand the magic that can happen. So this is how I've developed the Tinker Tub Magic Method and working well, like I said, I started this in 2017, specifically talking about Tinker Tubs, and I've worked with hundreds of educators since then. And so through all that of working with different programs and different centers and different all different types of learning environments, I have created the three steps to Tinker Tub magic. Okay, and we're going to cover all three steps. But just to get started, the first step is be intentional. Step two is make your tub. And I'm going to share two ways you can do that. And step three is guide the experience. And once you put all that together, that is the magic sauce. Okay, so are we ready to uh, get started here? All right, so secret number two, how to use Tinker Tubs without being a tinkering expert. And this is what the magic method is going to do for you. You're going to know what to do, how to use it with your students without having to be a tinkering or engineering or a STEAM expert. You can get started with this method today. All right, so let's dive into it. As I said, step one is be intentional. This is often the time we get so busy as educators that we kind of skip this step a lot. But really, I try to remind all educators, it's important to set the intention of what we want to happen. So if you're going to use Tinker Tubs, the first step is you want to set your teaching intention for using the Tinker Tub. Now, this doesn't have to be a big written essay. Just take a few minutes and think to yourself, why do I want to add or introduce Tinker Tubs? 
how do tinker tubs align with your teacher's vision or your mission and i'm not talking about your uh preschool program mission i mean a lot of the preschools will say oh we're raising lifelong learners which is wonderful but i'm talking about the vision you see for your classroom no matter what type of classroom you have you are the expert so what is your vision for that and how do you see tinker tubs enhancing that or helping um get aligned with your vision and then of course uh, you also want to ask yourself what do you want your learners to either learn from the tinker tubs or get more practice because you can customize the tub to be what you want it to be for your students so for example, if you want to focus on collaboration and sharing, then maybe you do small groups with the Tinker Tubs. If you want to focus more on fine motor skills, maybe you make sure you add some uh, smaller items in. So they really have to use those fine motor skills. So depending on the strengths or weaknesses of your learners, you can add or subtract, or you can make it what you need it to be to help your learners. So that is step number one, is setting that intention. Now, step two is making your tub. And as I said, we have two easy ways. So the first one is the DIY method, which I will go through with you, the steps on how to make your own. And then through the help of Beckers, we now have a fast and easy way to also have the Tinker Tubs. And I'll talk about that in just a minute. But let's go through the DIY method first. So you want to select your container. And no, it doesn't have to be a tub. Uh, so use what works for you. It could be a plastic bag, it could be a tray, it could be um, an individual tray. You could just use what you already have. Now, I will say for me, I really, it was really helpful to use a tub that had the lid because I was mobile. I went out into different learning environments. So for me, it was much easier to stack in the car and to pull out um, in the clear tub with the lid. So that is my suggestion. If you don't know where to start, start with that. But you can experiment and see what works best for you. Then you want to add your materials. And don't worry, you don't have to write all these down. These suggestions are listed in our guidebook which is a download in um, the resource link that is being posted in the chat. So you can just click that and download our guidebook and this page is in there. But you can see it is basic classroom supplies or materials that you most likely already have inside your learning environment. So you don't have to necessarily go out and get all sorts of different fancy supplies. You can use what you have. The important thing to think about though, is the using a variety of tactile materials. So as we mentioned in the beginning, the Tinker Tubs are all about the learners using their hands. So you have to think about the sense of touch. How do the different materials feel? You want to incorporate a variety of texture into your Tinker Tubs. So for example, we did a lot with the plastic cups, but you wouldn't want every material in the tub to be plastic. So you really want to be aware and mindfully choose what type of texture materials you are using. You also, another suggestion could add tools. So if you wanna introduce a new tool, you could put it in the tinker tub as a way that the students could interact and experiment and figure out how it works like for example magnifying glass it could be at science center you also could have one inside your tinker tub that they could use and experiment with then the last part is what are your students curious about i'm all about bringing it back to your students interest and what they are curious about if you have a class that loves dinosaurs, well then go ahead, add a dinosaur in. You want to connect to your students' interests and that helps keep them engaged. Now, I don't have it on the slide, but I know this was a question that was asked and that is, um, what about choking hazards? And this is always my advice. You are the expert in your classroom 
so you know what is going to work for your learners. I could say use these materials and not these, but then that is limiting maybe some children that could use those smaller items. So really, you follow your own um, early childhood guidelines there. And obviously use what is best for your students. So if you have some of our youngest learners, then maybe you don't want the itty bitty tiny materials. So just something to think about. Okay, and then step three is you put it out for your students to tinker with and start exploring. So the DIY method is you want to select your container, add your materials and start tinkering. Now, this is a screenshot of the very first Tinker Tub training I did way back in 2017. And actually my daughter, who I've been talking about that helped uh, create Tinker Tubs, she was hanging out in my office this week. She loves hanging out with me in my office, probably because that's how she grew up. And she saw this picture and she goes, mom, you look so much younger back then. So as you can tell, I have been doing this training for a while, but I am super, excited to announce that we have a fast and easy way to create tinker tubs because since i've been doing the training since 2017 it never fails every single time i do it i get an educator that's like jamie this is great this is wonderful but i don't want to make the tinker tub i don't have the time to do that and at before uh partnering with beckers i didn't have the um the, cap the capacity with my small team to actually produce Tinker Tubs. So that's why I'm so excited to share through the help of Beckers, we have brought this concept to life in a fast and easy way. Now, does the DIY method still work? Yes, you get to choose what works best for you. Now with the fast and easy Tinker Tubs, you simply order your tub and then you can get started right away. And with Beckers, we have created these different themed Tinker Tubs. So we've already thought about the different tactile materials. We've already thought about interests of young children and all of that is included inside the Tinker Tub. So it really makes it simple for you. You can order the tub and the tub is all ready to go for your learners to start tinkering. And as I said, you have, it's up to you which way you do it, the DIY method or the fast and easy method. I'm just excited. I get to bring both opportunities to you. So if one way works better for you, then go with that and start and get started with your Tinker Tubs. Because the magic of this works whether you create your own or you purchase one from Becker's, it doesn't matter. The magic sauce of the Tinker Tub is still the same. So just to review, so far we've, um, step one was be intentional. Step two is make your tub. And then step three is guide the experience. And this is where we really get magical. So when we guide the experience, we are prompting our learners for deeper exploring and extending that tinkering experience. So we want to deepen the learning experience. And we do that through step one, asking guiding questions, step two, listen and observe, and step three, extend the experience. Now I'm gonna dive into this just to go a little bit further with it. But when we ask guiding questions, I'm sure you're familiar with open-ended questions that prompt more than just a yes or no answer. So we're really looking for those questions that prompt the students to think even more. Now in the fast and easy uh, Becker's Tinker Tubs, we actually have provided different creative uh, questions that you can ask. So that's included with the Tinker Tub. But you are the expert for your classroom, you know what questions are going to spark the wonder and curiosity for your students. And when in doubt, because never fails, sometimes you could have a wonderful question set aside in your written lesson plan. And then when you're actually doing the lesson, you completely forget the questions you want to ask. So one good thing you can always say is just um, ask the learner to, oh, tell me about what you've created. And then usually they'll go into their whole story because we all know they love to share what they have created. Then step two is we want to listen and observe. Now, 
I raise my hand because I've been guilty of this too, where we ask this wonderful question and then we get distracted and we're not really actively listening to the answer. I know it happens to all of us, but one thing we want to set our intention and be aware is that when we ask these wonderful guiding questions that we actually do uh, listen to the response from our students. We also want to make sure that we're observing what the students are, what questions they're asking or what stories they are telling, because this is what helps prompt. I keep talking about this learning experience, and that's where we want to take the tinker tubs and turn it into this grand learning experience. I'll talk about that in just a minute, but first I want to make it very clear that tinker tubs are not steam okay the tinker tub itself is not steam tinker tubs spark steam so there's a difference there just putting out a tinker tub on the table is not integrating steam but what a tinker tub can do is it can spark different ideas where you do bring in science investigations or engineering challenges or art projects, or you bring in um, different math lessons to help extend the learning. So let me give an example of what I mean and what this all looks like. So here is a picture of a winter tinker tub that was simply cotton balls and Q-tips. Now you may notice the picture of the snowman there. I'm gonna talk about the images and the pictures in a little bit. So I'll, I'll come back around to that. But I noticed the children really got into building snowflakes. Now they um, were looking at the pictures of snowflakes, but I did not ask them to build a snowflake. They were coming up with these on their own. However, as the expert in my, uh, in my learning environment, I saw and observed that they were really into the snowflakes. So then I brought out different materials and now it did become a challenge. Okay, well, can we still build snowflakes with different materials? Which then led into this whole, um, what I call five-star learning experience where we made, we painted snowflakes, we made snow, we investigated different Arctic animals. Now here's the great news. I did a whole separate training with Beckers that goes through this entire process. So I'm not gonna, don't worry, I'm not gonna go all into the steps of this here. Today, I'm just talking about the Tinker Tubs, but I'm sure we can share the link if you're interested in the training I did previously that walks you through this whole process. But what I want you to take away from this is that all of that started because of a simple Tinker Tub. All right, here are some more examples. Here's a St. Patrick's Day Tinker Tub where we use different green and gold materials. And this turned into building leprechaun traps. Now, in the picture on the right, you will notice that there are shiny gold coins. Well, typically, if you set out shiny gold coins and you're doing a challenge, the children are going to get distracted and all excited because we're using super shiny gold coins. But because I'd already put them in the tinker tub, they already had time to play with them, to um, manipulate and figure out what they can do with the gold coins. They already had that time to explore. So when it came time to building the traps, we could really focus on the engineer and design project. We could solve the problem. How does a trap work? And the gold coins in this picture actually are serving a purpose. They are the bait to try to get the leprechaun into the trap. So you can see how a tinker tub can then help um, extend that learning experience. Here is another example of a Halloween tinker tub. And the child uh, did their own kind of loose parts creation here. And in case I didn't say this earlier, by the way, loose parts is simply what is in the tinker tub. So yes, you can use loose parts. They are just the different materials you add into your tinker tub. And so the child made the observation that their pumpkin had a square nose. 
Well, that led to reading the book Spookly the Square Pumpkin and led us to creating our own different shaped pumpkins out of Play-Doh. So you can see, well, I'll go back here a minute. You can see that just even the simple materials, you as the expert start to bring in the science, the engineering, the art, the math to make it all this five-star learning experience. Okay, so now to go back to, remember this learner, I shared that he built this beautiful tower out of wooden planks. But then when it came to the cups, he didn't quite know what to do with them or how to stack them. And this was actually from a superhero camp I did. So this was mainly a group of boys and they did start figuring out how to stack the cups and they created these elaborate hideouts and they kept using the word hideout and they made a hideout for the superheroes and they made a hideout for the villains and they really got into this. So I, as the educator, I saw this and we then made our own superheroes. We made our own villains, but then we also made our own hideouts out of recycled materials. And they really got into it using all sorts of intricate details. I mean, it was amazing to see them and they were all focused as well. And these are two separate pictures, but you can kind of see in the middle the blue tube going across. So they turned it into a collaborative project as well as they started making secret passageways to all everyone's individual hideout. So it really turned out to be an amazing project. When on the first day, they really didn't even have experience stacking cups. And then, then it turned into this whole uh, superhero hideout project that was amazing to watch. So this is what I'm talking about with the magic of Tinker Tubs. Now, starting with just two simple materials, it really can go this magical route of learning. And so once again, that is our three-step magic method is the be intentional, make your tub, and then guide the experience. And then that is where all this magic can happen. Okay, so secret number three, the three mistakes to avoid when getting started with Tinker Tubs and what to do instead. Now, as I said, I've been doing Tinker Tub trainings for a while. I have worked with hundreds of educators putting together Tinker Tubs. So I have learned a few tips along the way. And I definitely want to share those with you. Mistake number one too many materials. You want to keep it simple. And just because craft sticks come in a thousand pack, you do not put out all 1000 craft sticks into your tub or your bucket or your basket. You want to keep it simple, not only for yourself, but also for your, your learners. They get overwhelmed if there's too many things going on. If they can't even see what they have, it's just way too much. And then also this helps with cleanup. You want to keep it simple so that they can clean up, put all the materials back in the tub and put it away in, I always said like 30 seconds, but you know, whatever <laughs> works best for you. All right, mistake number two, and I'm going to take a sip of water here because I want to make sure to, <clears throat> excuse me, there we go. When I want to make sure that we're clear on this one as well, because I'm going to talk about the picture and the images here. When you see the pictures and like I'm talking about the snowman picture on the tray here, when I use it with a tinker tub, I'm using it as a creative prompt. So what I mean by that is in my experience, sometimes children don't have experience with open-ended play. They may see, see this tray of craft sticks and blue blocks and they may not understand what to do. They may turn to you and say, oh, what should I build? But we don't wanna tell them what to build. We want them to start thinking on their own. We want them to ignite their own imagination, their own creative play. So in that type of environment or with those children that just don't know how to get started, 
that is where the images really help or come into play. So when I use these, I'm not directing them to build a snowman. This is simply different winter images that were going on with other themes that they were le learning about. But they are able to go through the pictures and let that spark their own creative play. So just to make sure we're all on the same page here, in the snowflake example, I talked about this. When it was open-ended, they were just building the snowflake themselves. Because I saw that, then I could use the same picture as a challenge. So you can incorporate challenges in there. So I'm not saying you can't do a challenge. It's just you want to give them the time to explore, to do that creative play, to use their imagination first, then introduce the challenge. And mistake number three is not allowing time for learners to share their discoveries. We all know our learners, they love to share. They get so excited. They want to share with you. So it is my best advice that you think of a policy of how your learners are going to share. Now, it could be as simple as if two students are using a Tinker Tub that they just share with each other. So that's a simple way to get started. It also could be that they could draw their creation. Or if they have experience, they could take a picture or even make a video. So there are different ways that your students can share, but I definitely recommend allowing that as part of the process because that is how they learn to communicate what they have created and so that they can move up that higher level of thinking. So once again, this is often something that gets left out because we get so busy and we're on to the next lesson, but really is important for allowing learners to share and reflect and communicate what they have created. So to wrap it up here, the three mistakes to avoid are one, putting out too many materials, two, using the images as a challenge instead of as a prompt, and step number three, not making time for learners to share what they have discovered. Okay, so that wraps up our three secrets. We have learned why Tinker Tubs are more than just materials in a tub, how to use Tinker Tubs without being a tinkering expert, and the three mistakes to avoid and what to do instead. And all of this can be wrapped up with our Tinker Tub magic method where you are being intentional, making your tub, and guiding the experience for all that wonderful magical learning. And then you can take your simple materials and turn it into your own five-star learning experience. Okay, so what should you do next? Well, I encourage you to go out and try a Tinker Tub, whether it's you go try and make your own or you look at the ones we have available at Becker's. I encourage you to just give it a try. Who knows what magic could happen? Okay, now I know I've talked a lot, so hopefully, though, we have um, left time for questions here, and I am going to stop my screen and let Leslie pick back up. Great. Thanks, Jamie. I was going to actually make a comment when you had that last image up because um, just to let everybody know, when we bring a new product to market, we photograph it. We take it to a photo studio. Oh, thank you. That's great. We take it to a photo studio and we bring in um, child models. So as you can imagine, child models are children. <laughs> <laughs> and they they are they don't um, rehearse scripts or anything. So you never know what you're going to get. And so we always can get excited when we bring a product out for the first time and just have models sit down with it and start to use it. And then our photographer starts snapping pictures. But in this case, we had to say nothing. We didn't have to say, look like you're having fun or, you know, smile. Um, these children were so engaged that we had other models um, on the sideline saying, I want to turn, I want to turn. So, uh, Jamie, kudos to you for kind of getting us down this path. And um, I think, you know, that old, you know, picture is worth a thousand words. And that um, really spoke to us. So thank you. I think while, while we have um, this very um, enthusiastic ending, um, I'm 
please don't go because we want to just um, make sure that we get this poll up. And after the poll, um, what we're going to do is um, get to questions and then do a wrap up once again of how you can access Jamie's resources, um, some of the other resources and materials we have available for you. So give me a minute. You have three very easy questions. If everybody could just um, participate, that would be fantastic. We have about half of the folks that have already completed it. That's fantastic. We are going to wait a few minutes and let everybody just, I'll read the questions aloud if anybody is um, has any challenges reading or understanding any of the questions. Number one, how would you rate today's webinar? Number two, was the information valuable and applicable to your work? And number three, would you recommend this webinar to others who teach or care for young children? A couple more minutes, we'll get a couple more responses. Leslie, do you want me to answer some of the questions while people are filling out the evaluation? Um, let's just give it another minute okay. so, so we can um, let everybody stay focused. I think we reserved enough time. But we do, we do welcome people to continue to write their questions in the Q&A box if you have finished the survey. Um, just add them in there and then we will make sure that um, Jamie answers as many as she can. Okay, I'm gonna end the poll now because I think we got a good amount of responses. Great, thank you everyone, really appreciate that. So um, let's see, Jamie, um, are you looking in the chat box and are you seeing some of the questions or I can definitely pull some out for you? Um, well, I didn't, I missed the ones in the chat box, but okay. I see the ones that are in the Q&A box. Great, go, go for it. Okay, because here's a really great question too. How would you describe the difference between sensory tubs and tinker tubs? Now, once again, your intent behind it is what is important because technically, could you do sensory tinker tubs? Certainly, but you, it's really the intent you put behind it. When I think sensory tub, it's got all this material that students are digging their hands in and getting really into sand or getting into pebbles or getting into like, say even, uh, well, I was going to say slime, but I know a lot of the educators don't always go that route. But even with water, it's using kind of different liquids and materials like that. Where a tinker tub, I look at it as more simple kind of building materials, like something that students could manipulate and build up or create um, using a variety of loose parts. So sensory, I think of more using um, different types of sensory oriented materials, where a tinker tub may be more kind of your building materials. Um, I hope that helps clarify a little bit about that one. Okay. The um, other question is uh, tinker tub for toddlers. That would be where you can go the DIY route mm -hmm. and actually the materials you already use with your toddlers, whether it is, um, you know, bigger blocks or bigger balls or even scarves or anything like that, you could put into a tub and let them just have fun. A lot of the magic behind the tinker tub is pairing different objects that normally wouldn't be together. So you could take something from this center and something from this center. And now, oh, it's exciting because it's in its own little tub. So if you have toddlers, that may be, a be the best way to get started. And how many children is good to have at a tinker tub at one time? 
I would say between two to three children per tub. The idea behind it is it really is an kind of an individual small group type item. And that like building center, that's where you can go big and collaborative and have larger groups and you're building all sorts of different types of structures. But with the Tinker Tub, it is more individual or two to three children per tub. Now that does mean, and I've done this before, I've had different tubs spread out among the room. So if I have a larger group, I have different tubs, almost like your centers. So then that way everyone's actively engaged. And Leslie, let me know if you see any more um, um, questions. You know what, I'm, I will address the one at the bottom, the uh, where are you getting great pictures for the tubs. And I'm so glad somebody brought that up because I wanted to point that out. Um, we um, we looked at a lot of images and we tried to pull out some that we just thought would do what Jamie was looking for was to spark the interest, ignite that curiosity, um, let them explore in different ways. So they're, you know, they're somewhat open ended and interesting. And so clearly you could add your own. Um, we get them. Um, from iStock or one of those other platforms that allows you to download pictures. And in the case of the tubs, because we were trying to limit, you can see the size and we're trying to put a lot of materials in there. We have the pictures available as uh, free downloads for you. So when you go to that link that um, our folks have put in the chat box for you, you will see the pictures there. You can download them any size you want um, and use them, laminate them or do what you will. So just, I really wanted you to know that, that we're showing them here. We've printed them out um, to just give you a sense of what resources are available to enhance your tubs. Um, somebody said it's a silly question and we educators know there's no such thing as a silly question. I was tinkering a Becker term or an early childhood education term. Jamie, take that. Yes, I will. <laughs> tinkering is not new. Um, yeah. Tinkering is not new. Loose parts are not new. But what is new is putting it all together in this magic method. So that you won't find anyone else talking about how the whole method that I just walked you through in creating your own Tinker Tub. So that is what is brand new. And what I like to do is make it simple for educators to take a concept like what is tinkering? How can that look in my setting and actually make it work for you? Same thing with loose parts. I know that gets very abstract and educators get overwhelmed, like, I don't even know what to put out. So this is kind of like a stepping stone to help you get started into all that. So as I said, tinkering, you know, it was just a very nuanced between tinkering, making and engineering. Tinkering is that first step, that first introduction of how do these things work? So no, tinkering itself is not a new concept. It's just the way we talked about it here that is new. Great. Uh, and again, I really appreciate the questions that are helping me segue into the other information I wanted to share. Somebody said, I've noticed that your um, the Tinker Tubs that we are debuting here show as out of stock on our website. And I just want to let everybody know that we have crews. We we call them our kidding crews. I'm at our warehouse. I mean, imagine all the different pieces that go into these. So they are furiously working to um, put these together to make sure we can stay stay on top of your the demand. And um, so that's what's happening. Do not get discouraged when you see that they're out of stock. Uh, they are actively being put together now. We did have some, um, you know, and many people have experienced this supply chain issues with some of the materials, but for the most part, we will have these available. So the best thing to do for our purposes is get your orders placed. That will give us a better idea of what the demand is. And then we will have the folks um, that do all the hard work in the back um, and in our distribution center putting these together for you. Um, I think, you know, I went back to watch the process and I think what's happening is that they're kind of getting interested themselves and they're doing a little tinkering on their way to packing them up. <laughs> so, so there might be a little just delay because of that. Uh, let's see if we, ha I'm going to just go to my next slide. Um, just one on this slide, I just wanted to make the point that we are selling them in our catalog, the catalog, which will be coming out soon as a set of six, because as Jamie said, it is really nice to have the option to put a few out. 
um, in different areas of the room if you have a lot of interest. Um, and it also just lets you kind of grab at one when an interest arises. So you can also order them individually. Um, yes, um, that, those, some of those questions can be answered in the chat. Um, these are those amazing resources that we have um, hinted at. Jamie has made this whole Tinkertub guidebook available to you to download. And uh, when you go to this Tinkertub link, you're going to see additional resources aside from what are available in the Tinkertubs, just these additional materials. So we hope you um, definitely take the time to do that. And quick, one more quick look at any other questions, because I know those children are going to be waking up soon. So we have to be able to get everyone back to the classrooms. Uh, let's take a quick peek. I think we did a pretty good job. Oh, um, Jamie, is there a good preschool resource book you could recommend for tinkering? Um, you mentioned at the beginning a book that you have um, published. So maybe you'd want to reference that. <laughs> Yes, um, I do. I'm one of the co-authors of the series Steam Kids. Um, so you can go to steamkidsbooks.com or actually probably the easiest way is you can go to preschoolsteam.com. That's uh, my website. And we talk all about Steam for early childhood. Another resource um, that I mentioned is the other training I did for Beckers that really breaks down um, how to integrate STEAM into your early childhood program. So that is another good resource. And you can find Preschool STEAM on all the social media platforms. So you can look us up at Preschool STEAM as well. Perfect. And I see another Tinker Tubs um, what about Tinker Tubs oh. for elementary? That's a great question as well. And I would just say, whenever I have the tubs, I use the same tubs for all ages. Just, <laughs> just gonna throw that out there. That my my older, um, not only my own children, but even like when they have friends over, I see them go in my office and start taking tubs out, and they will <laughs> they will start creating with them. We so uh, I would use what you. Um, have available and just start see what happens take two materials put them in the tub and see what comes up um and lastly uh, we'll ask um somebody um on our team to put in the chat again how to access jamie's steam training there is a recording available for that so just to um let everybody know those of you that do have to get going we so appreciate you being here um we will follow up with sending you a link to your certificate, which you can download. And that link does expire, so don't delay. We will follow up with sending you a link to the recording to share with colleagues or review again on your own. And um, what else comes your way? Um, th that should be it. If you know of any uh, colleagues that were not able to join today, we will also be sending people that were not able to attend for whatever good reason. We'll sending we'll send them a link to the recording as well. We will continue to stay for a few minutes and let you chat with us. Um, we love seeing your comments, your feedback. Thanks so much for participating in the poll. And we look forward to seeing you again soon. Jamie, thank you so much. I'm going to go off camera. I'm going to go off mic. And we'll just follow the chat for a little bit and see if there's anything else we can help folks with. <laughs>